Greetings, beautiful viewers. This is Min, and welcome to episode 18 of Bronze League Bravehearts during, during the Bronze League Bravehearts Blitz. There's a lot of bees in that. Uh, today we are spectating Squirrel Eye. He's playing Medusa right here. He is in qualifying. This is his eighth qualifier game. And if you guys didn't hear from the last episode, we've actually opened up Bronze League Bravehearts to people who are in qualifiers and people who are in silver. So if your silver bronze are qualifying, you can sign up now to be spectated live on stream and put up on the YouTubes for all the YouTube fames. He, is, uh, he comes to us presenting, he's, when I asked him what's the one thing that you would like to see improved, he said, uh, my laning phase is always pretty bad, which usually ends up costing us the game. I also need help with my rotations. So we're looking at laning phase, which is kind of uh it's one of my favorite things to talk about it's it's pretty standard straightforward and the advice is really easy and simple to uh to distribute upon your earlobes and then rotations that's a little bit more of a complicated subject and it does vary on role and time of the game and several other different factors that we'll get into here in a little bit squirrel is opting out for the tier two trans start three putts mana three Pots, right? Correct? Three pots mana? Yes, three pots mana, three pots health. I love this build. Medusa is an ability based hunter rather than an auto attack based hunter like uh, on her or Apollo. So the tier 2 trans start is beautiful. It gives you a bunch of. A bunch of. Oh wow, I didn't know it gave you 4 MP5. Are you kidding? Oh, it's so broken. This whole time, I've been in ACD main for like a year and a half, and I just, I was just like, all right, tier two stacking item, that makes sense. And I never really like super looked into the stats, but that's amazing. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. The, the trans start is interesting. The, you're kind of fortunate going up against another tier two trans start ADC. So another ability based hunter, uh, Neath is your opponent. So your trades should be pretty even. I haven't seen, like, this is legit a Guan Yu support. I haven't seen a Guan support since season one. I haven't seen it since, like, launch. That stuff, that used to be OP. If you weren't present for that meta, be glad. Be glad because it was a very frustrating meta. It was all of a sudden, everybody started playing Hercules and uh, Guan Yu especially and just started wrecking in duo lane. It's it's super aggressive and has a lot of potential to pay off, but getting caught out just a wee bit. No? Alright, taking a lot of damage to the face. Needs hitting all of her autos over here. Very proud of you. Alright. Squirrel said he wanted to know about his laning phase a little bit. And I don't want to fast forward through this part too much because this is your laning phase. Alright. Looks like you're... Being a little timid. I don't know why Guan Yu keeps engaging. Guan Yu. Very nice choice. Oh! <gasps> you got it! You got it! I'm so proud of you! Did you get first blood or did the Chunga die first? The Chunga might have died first, but you got a kill. That was fantastic. You saw that Neath and Sylvanas were focusing in on your support over here. You knew that you had the advantage, and so you just went in on the Neath in the back line. And that's perfect. Beautiful use of your dash there. Medusa's three actually does reduce healing. Lacerate. Mm, how much? By how much, Smitten? 10% at this rank. So it's not a bunch, but he's also not healing for a bunch right now. Be careful. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is your positioning. Just your overall positioning as an ADC for your laning phase. So whenever you meet up right here in the middle, your waves are there, your enemy's there, that's that's your setup. What do you know about that? What what is the objective at that point once you once you've reached the lane and the minions are fighting each other and your enemy is there? What what is your goal? Your goal is to farm. Your goal for the first like five, six minutes, as, especially as an actually as an ADC, your goal is to farm the entire game because your your items are insanely expensive and they're vital to your ability to have any sort of effectiveness in a game. So your positioning right here is not superb. 
your objective is to clear the wave while taking as little poke as humanly possible. And then you can worry about poking them. But let's start with the very basics. Your wave clear. Medusa is one of those gods, much like Apollo, that has to... Put, like, she has to put her chest up against the melee minions. Oh, I'm sorry. No, she doesn't. It's the acid splash. Acid splash. No, no, no. You don't even have to be super far up. But you do have to be uh, putting yourself in, at an angle in which you can get caught out by Neath's spirit arrow. So, since you know that she's got spirit arrow, you can do one of two things. You can either try to use acid splash on the wave before she uses spirit arrow. Or you can wait for her to use hers first. Uh, I would, I would honestly... If you get your wave down faster, that's great. But it looks like Guan Yu is pretty much mainly keeping the entire like wave clearing process up to you. But Spirit Arrow, that's that's a straight line attack. That is a straight up line attack. So uh, if you position yourself right here, just right in between the minions, the, the two different types, you're going to get hit by the Spirit Arrow because Neath has to get right up here and then use spirit arrow in order to get the whole wave. There you go. Like that. Now, when you're autoing, I'd like to see you I'd like to see you just come over this way towards towards one side of the lane instead of standing right in the middle because right now you're kind of giving them a bonus. So they want to clear the wave too, but you're kind of in the way. So if they use any abilities on you, you're also going to take damage. So not only are they killing off the wave, but they're hitting you too. So I would like to see you come out towards uh, this dirtier part of the lane. I don't know. It's, this, that's a really gross color of brown. Come over here to the gross part, closer to the walls, and then try clearing out the autos there. It's a lot easier, and you won't take nearly as much poke. Now, granted, you're not taking a bunch right now, but if you were any closer, you would have gotten hit by that by that weave. At some point, Neeths are going to know how to use their weaves. And that was a really unfortunate use of hers, because now her spirit arrow is down for most of this wave. Alright, you guys are level 5. Can you see? Okay. You're both level 5, and they are staying underneath their tower for the most part, because they know that you guys have your ultimate. So, at this point, in this very specific situation, you'll see this a lot in games. You'll see this a lot in games. At some point, somebody's going to establish lane dominance, and once you're right at that peak, which is where you are, come try to zone out your opponents so they don't get any of the gold or the experience from the wave. Zone them out a little bit, but be very careful because for this lane comp, you have to deal with the Sylvanas, and Sylvanas' goal is to pull you. Like, that is that, like, I've said it before, but that's the bee's knees of playing Sylvanas, is getting the root and getting a pull. Aw, oh, she missed your weave. It would have rooted both of you, though. He was dead. Your purple is up, though. Instead of waiting for them to clear the wave for the next wave to come up, try to go for your purple. That way it's more efficient. And when I say efficient, it's because it's time efficient. So that whole time while you guys were waiting for them to clear the wave, since you guys had decided not to aggress on them, you could have just walked all the way back to your purple buff, and by the time you had it clear, like, the waves would have just been meeting, and you would have been able to come back and reapply that pressure, and it forces them out of their tower, so you could even aggress on them at that point, if you had any mana left. How much gold do you have in hand? 1,600? Yeah, you've got enough for, for trans, for sure. Little squiggly. Okay, it looks like you didn't have enough for an active or anything. You did get, no, you got two wards and three health pots. It's, I'm proud that you bought wards though, especially like, Whenever you're in qualifying or bronze or silver and even like halfway up gold, if you're ADC main, uh, your support's going to be not so great at warding. So you'll want to go ahead and just learn how to do it and just kind of put it into like a, like a rhythm that you have whenever you back. Make it something that, you, that you're conscious of. 
because they're not going to ward right. They're not going to ward often, and it's going to be in weird spots. So, as an ADC, over here, you want to ward next to, right here, next to their purple, and then uh, to your purple and their purple. And then at six minutes, you'll want to ward on gold. But the the gold ward, that's not your that's not your deal. Awkward engagement. All right, let's talk about this and why this is happening. Okay, they have wave advantage. Neath is low. What is Kabrakan doing? Oh, I guess he's stuck. Looks like he's coming for a gank. Oh, so this was a gank attempt. Sylvanas pull? Oh, no. The spirit arrow. Oh, that sucks. All right, leave. At this point... You know Neath still has her ultimate because you haven't seen her use it. You just saw Sylv use his. They're pretty low on mana, but if, like... <laughs> if Guan decides he wants to tier... If he, if he wants to dive the tower at six minutes with no real reason to... I mean, he's got Reinforced Greaves, so he's got an additional 150 health, but that doesn't really... Why Reinforced Greaves? Come on, Guan. Come on. Don't be a nerd. But, um... If he's going to do that at a level 6, your job as the ADC is to get out. If you can't peel for him, and you tried to with your ultimate there, and that was that was the correct decision to make, but since you saw him die anyways, don't try to kill him off, because you're probably not going to be able to. Yeah. Not, a, not a big issue. It is a, is a very minor mistake it's a uh, something that you want to try whenever your teammate dies you want to make the most out of it you want to try to compensate for that that death in some way and it's quite difficult sometimes as ADC you just gotta like if your support decides to go in without any kind of like agreement like I never understood that sometimes I would be uh, like solo queuing ranked and I'd be playing ADC and my support would just like He'd be gone for most of the game, and then all of a sudden at like like eight minutes, he decides to come around uh, next to their tower and gank on them and then get mad at me when he dies. He's like, why did you go out with me? I'm like, because that was a dumb idea. <laughs> like, I'm not going to join you. Like, you can still make those decisions. Like, their life isn't necessarily in your hands all the time. Neath killed Guan again. Why is Neath in solo lane? Why is Sylvanas still here? Why is stasis happening again? Probably because I'm fast forwarding too much. See, that's the only problem with doing these things live is uh, I want to try to get you through the parts that aren't super relevant. But it, they're playing the game right now. Ooh, nice. Use the ult there. Very nice. I knew you were going to get that. Pull back, just fine. Very nice. <laughs> You're gonna run back to the tower and back. That's so cute. Very nice. I understand that. I used to do that too. And honestly, it's the correct way to back instead of lazy backing, which can get you killed a lot. And if you've been playing the game for a while or you have a bunch of times sunk into the, I just I lazy back. Like if I think I can get away with it, then I'm gonna try at least. But uh, I have a pretty good sixth sense for knowing whenever I'm not going to be able to get the bag. Sometimes I don't notice it. Sometimes I have the item, uh, I have the store open whenever I press B. And it comes to, like, whenever I actually try uh, to purchase the item, it turns out that I didn't actually back. And that's really, really frustrating because then I die. So I'm, like, in the item store buying stuff. Like, pay attention. Like, this game, like, stuff can happen in this game in literally a blink of an eye. Like... I can't tell you how many times I've gotten jump scared. You're gonna go for your purple. She's gonna try to, she's backflipping there because she wants to weave you. But that means her escape is down, so you guys can go in on her easy. Easy peasy. Oh no, that's so troll. But they're kind of like in your neighborhood, so you should be able to get it. Very nice. What did you purchase on your back, friend? Boots. Boots and beads! I'm so proud of you! 
Yeah, you, they're pushed really far up. That was really super aggressive. Very nice. Now, if if this was any other game, or if you were in like the perfect world, <laughs> your team would group up and do Gold Fury right now because, like, Vaman is dead. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That's your team. So you've got the duo duo lane over here dead, and mid is backing. Uh, you can't necessarily see that, but like the three of you guys could group up and take that out relatively easy. Especially with clay soldiers doing uh, tanking most of the damage. Now it's going to take all of you guys to kind of burst it down uh, in enough time to secure it. But this time, this would be a time where I would go for an objective. And the reason why I would go for an objective here, like Gold Fury, instead of a tower, is because the tower isn't anywhere close to being dead. I mean, you're chipping away at it now, and that's also a, a correct decision if it doesn't look like you're going to be able to get the Gold Fury, or perhaps you don't have enough people there or enough damage. Is she really going to ult you? Oh my god. That's adorable. Careful, careful, careful. Tower hurts. Very nice. Oh, but Poseidon's there. <gasps> the CC immunity from the ult! Oh my god! Squirrel, that was so good! Oh, the beads! The beads! What do you mean you don't know how to... What do you mean your laning phase is always bad? Dude, this is epic! That was perfect! It was really ballsy and quite risky, and if you were even with Neath, I don't think you would have stayed, but you're two levels ahead of her right now, and you're four levels ahead of their support, so... You got really lucky that that worked out, is all I'm trying to say, is if, if they were any closer to your level, then I wouldn't have gone for it. But that was pretty hype. Your your beads reaction to the pull was beautiful. Oh my god. We ladies and gentlemen, we have a ward on Gold Fury at eleven minutes into the game. Hallelujah. What's Numa doing? Not nothing. Where are you going? Where are you going? Mid? Oh! Oh! Be careful. Don't try to engage right there. Just try to push him out. The reason why I say don't try to engage right there is because that's a really skinny hallway. And it's really easy for Neath to land a uh, spirit right Rally. there. Enemy Holy crap. See? It's really easy for her to land those spirit arrows in the skinny sections. Or you're gonna get blown up by Sir Cat. Oh! Oh, God! So close! Yeah. That was an unnecessary engage. And honestly, if the rest of your team was alive, it wouldn't have been that bad. You guys probably would have gotten a couple kills there. But uh, Kabrakin is only level 10, so he's right around the same level as the people you've been stomping all day, so he's not as far ahead of you. Or not as far ahead as you are, so he can't do as much as you can. Like I said, not a big issue. Nothing like that. It's just <clears throat> 12 minutes into the game, you're going to want to start grouping up in at least like twos or threes. Just try to match whatever they've got. If they've got three people, make sure you've got three people. And then you can wait for them to make mistakes. Okay, now as an ADC, and if you have their tier one tower taken care of, as you've had for several minutes now, you can actually start rotating over. The, the rules for rotations for ADC are a little different because you want to try to maintain your tower Oh my god, you're rotating right now. I was just talking about this. Awesome. Ooh. Little bit of a stun there. Oh, they're good. They're diving you hard. That's two ults. That's two ults. Oh, unfortunate. You didn't have to. Don't go in. Just get out. Get out. Get out. Instead of using your ult there, you should have just left. Because if you back, uh, then refuel, and then hurry up to this... Uh, back to mid lane, then this team fight's probably still going to be happening. And you'd have your ults available, but this time you'd be at full health and you'd be using it for uh, to get a kill rather than trying to like peel. 
Your team's going for gold. Not a terrible idea, considering Neath and and Poseidon are dead. Kraken is, has been used. The ultimate on Sylvanas had been used, so that, that was a, that's the reason why you guys got that gold for you right there, is because they couldn't contest. Great decision making. But uh, as any your your rules for rotation are somewhat similar to solos. So if you've got your tier one down and there's something for you to do in mid lane, like uh, go help secure mid camps or help clear buffs or help clear mid lane or, you know, get the objective. Oh my god, you have Link. Oh my god, you're OP. Oh! All oh, the alts! Careful, Poseidon doesn't have alt yet, but he's gonna start hurting. Changa's got a lot of burst. You don't have much sustain, but you still killed him. Got killed though. Hmm. Now you'll probably lose your your tier one tower over here. What did everybody? Everybody died there. Why is that? There's the team fight still happening over there in Solo. What's her build? Why isn't she doing any damage? She's got trans. She's got the right boots. She's got trans power boots, and she's really into uh, Soul Eater. But she's not doing crap for damage to this tower. I uh, see. Oh my God! Full beads by 16 minutes. Ah, oh, so proud of you. That is fantastic. Bamana's being really greedy. <laughs> Not much on on the map to do right here. Just all all your camps are up. Just clearing those out. Clear the wave. They did get get your tower. That's unfortunate. Now it's time to group up and fight. Mid camps are available. You have four people in mid, and there's only two on their side, so it would put you really out of position if you decided to in to engage up here. But Sir Ked's caught way out. But you guys don't know that because you don't have wards. Oh, that hurts. Oh snap! Leave, leave, leave! Don't stay! Don't stay! He's gonna try to pull you again. They're gonna, they're gonna get you if you don't run. Quickly! Oh, unfortunate. Okay, the reason why you should have run in this situation. Wait, 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 we're not that far back. Go forward, go forward. Backwards, all right, we have to watch from this point. Okay. The positioning right here is fine. Typically, if you're just if you're getting mid camps, especially if they don't have a tower, just do this quickly and then just just leave because more than likely they have a timer or somebody's watching the timers very closely. You guys are ahead by about 3,500 gold, 3,500 ex experience. Also, uh, let's slow this down. Looks like you're pulling back. See if if you weren't all the way up here, Sir Ket. I mean, she's got mobility like a motherfucker, so she probably would have caught up to you eventually, but it would have cost her some abilities. Looks like uh, she accidentally... Okay, yeah. After, If you're going to use your ult to help peel yourself away from a situation, which is, I don't know if you know that's what you're doing in this situation, but that's what you're doing. You're, you're, trying, you're using your ult to peel yourself out because you're really, really low. You're only level 15. Neath is now level 13. She's still two levels below you, but she's starting to do some serious damage. Especially with, with Sir Ket and Sylvanas. Sylvanas is going to heal them. So any damage that you do to Neath or Sir Ket or Sylvanas right now is pretty much irrelevant because he's just going to heal most of it back up. You can't burst them down immediately since you, I mean, you've got Asi, you have Warrior Tabby, and you have Transcendence, but you don't have crits, so you're not able to super burst them down to do any, like, lasting damage. So instead of trying to stay in the situation, I would have tried to get out. Alt and then out immediately. Karakin's trying to, and he's just like, oh, I can't do it. 
I'm a fat man. Nuon did pick up the neat though, so you should have gotten assist for that. You're six, four, and three right now. It's a good score. We'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit because I think we should be out of the stasis realm. What are you doing, nerd? What you got now? Light blade. Looks like you're going into executioner. Seventeen minutes in executioner. I guess not an awful idea. After I get my first attack speed item, typically I try to build into crit. Like your ability based hunters, building crit on them is like is amazing because you're gonna build for uh, a you're gonna have a power based build. Which means your crits are gonna be hitting a lot harder. I like your positioning here. This is your job as an ADC. Once you get under, under a tower and you see that your team is aggressing. Okay, we're gonna pause real quick. In this situation, if you see your team aggressing onto their team underneath the tower and you're an ADC, your focus, if you just use your abilities on them, try to CC them, keep them in place if you can, but uh, whittle away at the tower. So that way your team doesn't have to continuously take damage from it. And plus, their team can't use this as a shield anymore. Because that's what that's essentially what sh what towers are. Is they're just mini little shields that if you if you cross, you get pew pewed on by you know a significant amount of damage. Careful. Don't fight Changa. Oh. Oh, she caught you with just the tip. Not why not sure why Nuwa is still here. I mean she could. It's really difficult to kill a Chonga at 18 minutes. It really is, man. <laughs> Sylvanas is funny when he jumps quickly. Oh, they're gonna get gold. Oh no, they're gonna get gold! I mean, you guys are really far ahead, so it's not gonna kill you too much, but it's gonna be enough to be annoying. Oh, they're not bursting it down fast enough. They're not doing it fast enough. Who does it go to? Who got it? Who got the gold? Blue team got it, no! And that's the consequence. Oh, that Kraken. Oh, but the ult! That reaction time is amazing, Vamata! I'm so proud of you! How, what's your score at? You're six and two, man! Where's where's our man Squirrel Eye at? Back here, he's like, guys, guys, wait, wait, wait. I'm the ADC, don't worry. I got you. Oh, nice! Got the stun off! Why, why are they engaging? You guys are kind of low. Sylvanas is up soon. All right, very nice. Push for Phoenix here, and then you can set up for fire. Well, wait, just kidding. Just kidding, you should leave immediately. There's three people here, you should leave immediately. Let Nuwa deal with it. Yeah, there you go, counter jungle. This is a beautiful time to counter jungle. This is not something I would consider greedy at all. And the reason why this isn't greedy is because you're relatively safe doing this. You saw where the their available teammates were over here dealing with Nuon left lane, and their jungle was up, and you weren't getting the Phoenix. So that's effective use of your time instead of standing here waiting for the their team to leave so you can take their Phoenix. That's not gonna happen. So you made a effective use of your time clearing out their jungle camps. It's beautiful. I hope you guys are backing to set up for another team fight. Alright, looks like they're gonna encounter your ward over here at fire. Interesting. 
I love the angle that you're coming into this fight in. Oh my god. Very nice. I like that you used your ult there to uh, to slow her down. Mm, I'm gonna catch him out. Is that a Kraken though? Does he have a Kraken? No Kraken available. Oh, oh, oh my god, you guys, like, you literally, that was like the perfect flank. That was amazing. This is a qualifiers match? Are you sure? I checked your profile in Smite Guru. You're not lying to me. And Kabrakin, I don't know why you're tanking so so much. See, here, this is the perfect time to talk about the, uh, the drawback of having a warrior for your support in the support position you are not nearly as tanky and by tanky i don't mean you ha you don't have the base stats or scaling uh of your health or protections that guardians that actual guardians do so tanking towers is actually more risky for you than tanking a tower as sobek or geb or anybody like that because they're just naturally beefcakes when you're playing guan Yu support you're you're more damagey utility having lots of stuns and, and burst which you obviously you guys oh my god that's insane your jungler isn't doing amazing but your solo is doing great your mids doing fantastic your support and your ADC are doing great and that's why you guys are able to win this there's only one person that you kind of have to make up for and Kabrakin I mean he's got lots of assists he's been there for most of the team fight so he's just doing his job as a tanky frontliner He's a mage warrior, is what he is. I like this decision to take fire here. Very nice. I'd like to see everybody back. Oh my god! Oh my god! They're not doing anything! Wait, wait, wait! We got one green nerd! We got one green nerd! Vamana's like, hey! Oh, but then Vamana's gonna get rotated on. But Mana, you have your ult, so if you got it, why are you using it? <laughs> Sorry, that was a hiccup. Why are you using it now, Vamana? Vamana, it's like Poseidon. Dooney's gonna get away. Oh, but the Neath is applying damage to you. That's that's adorable. Oh no, she got your dash. <laughs> Big problem. All right, now that you have backed after Fire Giant, group the bunk up. And take out another Phoenix. Apply pressure. Get some kills. This is the fun part of the game when you're ahead. Is coming in for that final push. Very nice. You guys, like, you're just flanking them. That's fantastic. You got two of your teammates over here on this member. And then you have Vamana over here who looks like he's going to secure Changa. He's been wrecking her all game. It's wonderful. It sounds it it honestly it looks like you guys are all in comms together I would assume because it, this is just fluid motion between the five of you Yeah, just get that tight There's a lot of players that will pad stats towards the end so that means they'll like oh my god so BM Oh my god, it's so BM Vamana Come on, Omega doesn't even do that anymore. <laughs> Alright, so Skrillai presented with my laning phase is always pretty bad, which usually ends up costing us the game. I also need help with my rotations. Well, we saw in that game your your laning phase actually wasn't bad at all. As a matter of fact, uh, some of the, the errors that you were making in lane was simply your positioning as an ADC. So you were just, you were way too close to the wave. As an ADC, like that's where or in the lane that's where most of the damage is going to take place like if you could just paint all the areas in the lane that damage is applied in most of it's going to be in the middle because that's where the wave is that's where the wave is so just don't stand in between your your minions it's just it's just begging for poked eye somebody's gonna poke your eye out <laughs> all right guys uh I hope you enjoyed this episode of Bronze League Bravehearts. If you want to sign up, if you, like I said, qualifiers, bronze, or silver, there is a link in the description, and I will see you guys next episode.